A video? You're going to make a video? What kind of video? <laughs> hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping into my shack in the back room for a ham shack chat. I'm trying to come up with a better idea for what I have, but that's what I got for now. Now, we all know the old saying, the job isn't finished until the paperwork is done. We haven't done the paperwork. Boy, I can tell you that's true. For many of us, as far as it goes to ham radio, that means confirming your QSOs. And since 2003, that means uploading your information to the logbook of the world. LOTW is a web accessed database provided by the American Radio Relay League or just the league or ARRL to implement a contact verification service amongst ham radio operators. Using this service, hams can claim and verify contacts made with other hams, generally for getting credit toward operating awards, such as your Workdoll States or DXCC, and their various flavors. Once upon a time. Prior to 2003, the only way this could be done was the exchange of QSL cards and the submission of these cards to the ARRL for checking. This was a slow and quite often expensive process. Since the kickoff of Logbook of the World, over 1.6 billion QSOs have been entered into the system. Now, there is still a small fee for applying for award credit, and that's mostly to cover the cost of printing your awards and mailing them out. Outside of that small fee, there is no cost to register with LOTW and a RRL membership is not required. Now, if you haven't signed up for Logbook of the World yet, I highly recommend this video by Valerie Hotzfeld. And Valerie, I hope I got your name right. And she's NV9L. Now that will take you through the steps necessary to get registered. I will also link this video down in the video description. Now you might ask, why didn't you do this, Tom? Well, the answer is she did such an excellent job. I couldn't improve on it. All the information is there. She's got graphics and she shows you where on the website to go and what to do and what to download and what to expect. Quite simply, she did a lot better job than I could have. If you have any questions, recommendations, corrections, or just general remarks, please leave them in the comments section. What can I say? Uh... Once you're all set up and registered, there are a few ways to get your information into the system. So you completed your registration, and uh, thank you, Valerie, for that wonderful explanation. And you should have on your desktop a TQSL shortcut. That's if you went through that whole thing. And you've received your postcard and you've put your information in and everything is ready to go. We're going to open up our TQSL, which if it's not on your desktop, don't worry, uh, you can still go ahead and get go through your files and find it. We're going to start by clicking on this icon right here which is create an ADIF file for signing and loading. Now this is my HRD logbook. You might get this pop-up warning. This just indicates that I'm running logbook without the rest of HRD actually being working. So I'm just gonna click out of that. I'm going to come here to this W6 GMT and I'm gonna double click on his call and it's gonna bring me up all the information and we're gonna use this information to populate over here. Highlight that, copy and paste. The date format changes. So I'm gonna to have to put it in in this format, the year, month, date format. So it's 2023-04-10. The time was 10:48:15. So I'll just highlight this and this is Zulu time. 10, 48, and 15, Zulu. Mode, you can see we've got a lot of modes here. You can take your time and go through those at some point in the future, but we're gonna select FT8. My transmit mode was 40. 
my receive mode also 40 and my frequency 7.075 and 7.075 that includes the offset propagation mode is if you're doing something special like meteor scatter or EME satellite is what you'll put in there if you're doing a satellite contact you'll put in which satellite that you had so we're going to add this QSO and I'm going to go OK and you'll see this has been added and I'm going to put in this call sign W6 GMT and that's the way I'm going to save this one. This would be very useful say if you were coming over from paper copy because you can continue on and enter more and more and more. So I'm going to come up here I'm going to sign a log. I'm going to go to my ADI's files and I'm going to select him, open it. It's going to make sure everything is right and I'm going to go OK. No need to put in a date. That is now uploaded. If you've got an existing ADI already built that has multiple QSOs in it, you can import all of them over at the same time, all the QSOs. So let me show you where on WSJTX, and by the way, I'm using FT8 because it's kind of like a target of opportunity. I know I can make a lot of QSOs really quick. And in the last 10 minutes, I've made a few additional ones to add to this file. But if you come up here to File, Open log directory. This is your WSJTX uh, file. And right down here is the WSJTX log. Everything that you save from uh, WSJTX is stuck in that file. Now, rather than having to dig down through all of this stuff every time, I put a shortcut out. So let me show you. Here's my shortcut. It's on my desktop, ham radio, ADIs, and right there is my shortcut. That's the shortcut I'm going to be using to get to the log to upload everything. What you want to do is come up right here, sign a log, and upload it automatically to the logbook of the world. Just click on that, and it's going to say, well, where do you want to go? Well, here's my one under app data, but I want to go to my desktop ham radio, ADIs, and then the shortcut down here on the bottom. Make sure that all this information is correct. You don't need to put any dates in. It's going to tell me I've got an error. What these errors means is that I've already uploaded a QSO. Well, no kidding, because you'll find that once this processes, I'm sitting at, gosh, it's got to be 17, 1800 QSOs. And you see right here, here's the things I'm reading. And here's how many errors I get right here. You see, I have 1575 QSOs, which appear to have already signed for upload to Logbook of the World, and eight QSOs which are new. So I'm going to say, I just want you to upload the new QSOs. And at this point, those QSOs are in my logbook of the world. Something that needs to be mentioned and will be several times throughout this video is that while I'm using FT8, the same processes shown here can be used for all the modes you want to log. I used FT8 as a target of opportunity because I can log a lot of contacts in a pretty short period of time. If you find so far this video to be interesting and informative, or at least moderately entertaining, please click on the thumbs up icon and give me a like. Oh, I like that. I like that. This is my Ham Radio Deluxe logbook. You do not have to use Ham Radio Deluxe as most available loggers will have something similar within it. I plan on in the future looking at a few of these, like Logbook for Old Men, and producing a video on that. Now the first thing we're going to do is recall that in WSJTX they have their own log, an ADI file. So we want to import that ADI file. We're going to come up here to Logbook, File, Import, ADI. I'm going to select 
my map over and if you recall I mentioned that I have it on my desktop so this is the log that I want to bring in and I'm going to click on open it's building everything in it says ready so I'm going to save it to my database and it's still saving to my database and you'll see I imported 32 entries. I'm going to click on OK and then finish. Finishing will, will take what I've put into my database for HRD logbook and display it here. Now you can see I've got a column here for logbook of the world sent and I've got a bunch of QSOs that need to go across. So I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to go to Logbook of the World Upload. In this section, you're going to want to have these two addresses, your username and your password. In the TQSL options, you're going to bring in your TQSL location. And I can click that. And you see this is, that's my path. And come down here and there's my TQSL. So that's what you want to bring in. I'm going to just cancel out of that because I've already done it and I'm going to upload. And what I'm uploading is this TQ8. Now that's finished and you'll see me update this page and now everything indicates that it has actually been sent. What you can further do is I'm going to go to logbook of the world download same information up here and I want to pick a date here uh, sometimes I will just I'll do an upload back 10 years or one or two years or you know six months this time I'm just going back one month and selecting March 1st as my start date I'm going to click on download and you see I am actually I'm actually bringing in my stuff and what this is going to do this is going to indicate if I have any new QSO verifications I'm going to save to database I'm going to save this to da database and I'm, once that is ready, I'm going to click on Finish. And again, that's going to bring the information from my database out to this page. And you can see that, yes, I have a few verifications. So those are, yeah, here's a Serbia, uh, which was a new DXCC on this band for me. And that's how you upload and download your QSO information from Logbook of the World. Importing and uploading your ADI files in this fashion is useful if you're going to do a contest, a Parks on the Air activation, a de-expedition, or any other time you gather a bunch of QSOs in a short period of time. You can import, quite literally, thousands of QSOs and upload them all at the same time. As Valerie notes in her video, Logbook of the World will give you QSL credit for QSOs where both parties are on the same mode, same band, within 30 minutes of each other, and have the other person's call listed. Help me to get the word out and share. Come on, share with me. This video with your fellow hams, maybe in your clubs, uh, during your drive time chats in the morning or evening or whenever you do your drive time chats, and especially on any social media sites you may frequent. There is a way that you can upload every single QSO as they are made. So I'm going to show you that. First off, you want to have this program, Grid Tracker, installed on your computer. And if you go to this video, it'll show you how to do that and some basic settings that you'll need there. So you're going to want to open up your settings menu, which is this one right here. And it's going to bring up our settings. That settings icon kind of looks like a couple gears working together. And I'm going to come here to my logging tab. 
And down here, you're going to want to have under Logbook of the World, you're going to want to have these three set, three, three buttons. You're going to want to have your, your Logbook of the World login and password. You're going to want to verify that your TQSL path is good. You're going to want to put in your TQSL password and your station name. Now we'll test our download. You see I'm testing and it passed. And I want to test my TQSL and that's just going to pop up and verify the version on my QSL. At this point we can close the settings menu and let's uh, go ahead and make a contact. And once I get the option to log it, if I go OK, at this point, that has been uploaded to Logbook of the World. So another way to get your QSOs into Logbook of the World. Now for a final check, I'm going to pop up my Logbook of the World, and log in, and I'll tell you right now that it can take several days for your Logbook of the World to actually show up here. Today is April 12th as I record this. I'm going to go to my most recent QSOs right here. And remember when I was talking about Serbia before? Well, that, that shows up here. And my most recent QSO showing up is on the 10th. You can see if you come up here to this tab, it says your account and your activity. You see that my most recent update was on 411. You can click on the result here and you can see that I actually QSL'd a contact with three people and three QSL records were entered. Those QSLs were on the 11th. I'm going to go back to my logbook activity. If I go down here to the 10th, you'll see that I made a number of QSOs doing what I just showed you with Grid Tracker. And this is the result of that. So that's what was happening with Grid Tracker. Now, again, it can take several days for this to show up, especially if you're trying to load up during a major contest. It could take up to a week for your stuff to show up here. And that completes three different ways to get your QSOs into Logbook of the World. My goal in this video was to give you enough know-how to easily do this final chore in the QSO process. And I hope you enjoyed your time on the journey. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. As always, I am at your service and hope you are looking forward to the next video as much as I am looking forward to putting it together for you. This has been a Ham Shack Chat. I'm Tom. ND3N, and I am out.